thank you for joining us. Um, welcome to Washington State Wire. We are a nonpartisan policy agnostic platform that showcases politics and policies here in the state of Washington. We are honored to have with us two uh, new members of the House of Representatives. We have um, uh, Representative elect uh, Alicia Rule and Representative Emily Wicks. I'm going to start by having them um, introduce themselves, telling us about their party affiliation and any of the committees that they have been assigned to. So um, I'm going to start with you, Alicia. Hi, well, thank you so much for having me here today. Hi, well, thank I you am so much for having me here from today. the 42nd District. Is district. That is Bellingham and North, but I'm not waiting for the table to be. I think the best part of Washington, but I'm willing to have that debate with you. I am elected as a Democrat, and I'm here to serve all of us in the 42nd District. I was on the Plain City Council prior to arriving here really because there were some parents on the the sidelines of my kids' baseball field talking about some of the community challenges that they saw. And I thought, why don't I jump in and see if I can make a difference here? And somehow this has sent me to Olympia to work in politics. I never imagined I would be here, but this is where I am today. And I'm really excited to be able to serve our community. I'm also a social worker, and I have a small business in Bellingham. Great. Um, Emily, why don't we um, why don't we have you, uh, Representative Emily Wicks, why don't we have you go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Please introduce yourself. Sure. Hello and good afternoon. Sure. Hello and good afternoon. Emily Wood. I was appointed in May to represent the I was appointed in May to represent the Parts of Marysville, Tulalip, and Everett. I will argue with uh, Representative Will. Uh, a little background on me, I grew up in Marysville and attended Marysville School. I had a great opportunity to attend Washington State University and learn a bachelor's degree in public relations and political science. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle. And then started working in government affairs in Seattle.
to make this step into making the change. Um, and I know you all sort of alluded, but let's let's take a little more time um, from each of you about you know what inspired you to come to where you are. And I'm just going to go ahead and go down the list again, and I'm going to start with you, um, Alicia. Why don't you go ahead and start? Hi, thank you. Thanks for your patience with our sound. I hope this is much better for all of us. Uh, I was really inspired to run for office because my parents raised me right here in the 42nd district, actually, with a mindset of community service. So all my life, I've just been one of those people who's kind of involved in everything, um, volunteering for this and volunteering for that. And sometimes I kind of make the joke that if you volunteer enough, eventually you're going to wind up in some sort of elected position because that's where you can make change. And I'm always looking for ways that we can make change and improve the lives of the folks that live in our community. So I was sitting on the sidelines of my children's baseball game and I heard some of the other parents talking about some of their concerns that have been repeated so many times. And it occurred to me that maybe we could actually just do something about it. And I didn't really know anything about at the time what the issue was at hand, but I dug in and I learned and with an attitude of community service, I just landed um, on the Blaine City Council. And then as I learned on the Blaine City Council about how governance works and what it means to be a representative of your community, the next logical step was to step into this role uh, if the voters decided which they did. Um, and I'm just so grateful to be here with an open mind and here with an attitude of service. That's great, thank you so much. And same question to you, Representative Blake. Well, thank you. You know, as someone who's worked in communications their whole professional life, I, I tend to feel like I know a little bit about a lot of things. And I'm always happy to help someone with a passion around a particular issue um, to present their policies uh, to the public in a way that's clear, straightforward, and, and easy to understand. Um, and I feel like a lot of my amazing colleagues come into this work and they had a particular policy or passion area that they they wanted to work on, you know, whether that be housing, healthcare, the environment, um, justice reform. And, and I deeply share those values and the passions that each of these wonderful people bring. But I think it comes down, um, like coming to the legislature, I come here as a general with uh, the deep love and commitment um, to and, and the long time experience in the communities of Marysville, Toledo, and Everett, similar to um, representative elect rule. Um, I was, you know, here as a child, a student, and, and now um, as an adult. And my community and, and pulling for the su success of the people in it is truly what drives me. Um, and I think for me, it was the the shooting that happened at Marysville Pilchuck that actually brought me back to my hometown. Um, when that happened, I started getting really involved in some nonprofits and, and the foundation that I'm still a part of here with the Marysville School District. Um, and that led me to work on school bonds and levies. Um, and so the opportunity to leave my hometown and come back and, and understand my community's sex, sex, successes sorry, and challenges with a new lens has really informed everything um, and, and was the driver, I think, to, to have me decide that I could make a real difference. Um, and, you know, that the work that I want to do for the city of Marysville and, and how that's involved Everett and Tulalip has very much pulls into all of the issues around housing, childcare, healthcare, economic development, and social justice. Um, and, you know, in 2016, I ran the bond for the Marysville School District, and it was very unsuccessful. Um, and Marysville has not been able to pass a bond in nearly 15 years. Um, and, and the last attempt to um, failed as well. I, I see the connection between these deteriorating schools um, and then what that has on the community's success and its ability to grow its economy and, and its deep struggles around equity and overall quality of life. Um, so I'm really, you know, committed to that. And I think, you know, coming back here and then the process from, you know, 2016 and beyond um, has really kind of um, catapulted me into this role and, and made me see that, that this is an option and an opportunity for me um, to help my community. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And Representative-elect Nobles, can you please uh, share with us what inspired you? Thank you. And I just want to correct, Senator-elect. <laughs> um, 
But I um, was inspired to run for a variety of reasons. About three years, for, or over the course of three years, several community members had asked me to run for, um, you know, the next seat or something different or state senate. Um, and had asked me to actually, you know, challenge our, our current senator. But three years ago, I was new to my job at Tacoma Urban League as president and CEO. I've been serving on the school board the past five years. So I also was really enjoying um, my time focusing on education and, and creating policy there um, for the University Place School District. And my children were much younger at that time as well. So, you know, my life was um, content in the ways that I was working and focusing and serving my community. And um, ultimately, when I decided to run, it was because my community, you know, had committed to having my back and, you know, it would be a really big race, but a, a great opportunity to create change and to add um, representation, increased diversity to add a black senator to our state legislature. Um, and also, you know, I think about all of the um, educators, you know, I was um, a teacher, I have a master of arts in teaching, but I've been a teacher. And so I think for educators, for moms, I have four children, three of them who are um, still living at home and remote learning um, for wives and for folks who have a background like mine, experiencing homelessness, experiencing foster care, um, knowing what it's like to be um, abused or just, you know, um, consistently, you know, in the margins of, of our community. I, I want those folks to know that it's always the right time to do the right thing. And if that means run for office or step up and serve in any capacity, that it's something that they could do, um, even against an incumbent, even when you have, you know, zero dollars to 100,000 of, of dollars, um, it's something that you can do to create change. And so I hope that, you know, running for office and more importantly, the work that lies ahead of us in this session um, to move our community through this pandemic really inspires other folks to be civically engaged, to get involved, and to just, to just step up and do the right thing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's the, very, very interesting and, and kind of going along uh, with this. And I know that since you're all new and Representative Wicks, I know that you have been here for a little bit, but um, Tell us what was the most surprising thing that you ran across on the campaign trail while you were running for this office. And why don't we go ahead and start with Senator elect Nobles this time and then go up the chain. Thank you. Such a good question. Well, lots of surprises, but I would say um, to choose one, maybe the greatest surprise is how successful we were able to be um, in relationship building, considering we didn't do any doorbelling. And I have worked on so many campaigns. My undergrad is in US politics campaign to know you win campaigns by knocking on doors. You have to get out in your community and, you know, introduce yourself and talk to people. And especially um, as a challenger and someone who is who is new. But we decided because of the pandemic and because all of the research and all of the polling was advising us to stay away from doors and people simply did not want to see a stranger at their door, we had to utilize um, relational organizing um, and really focus on introducing um, the campaign and me as a candidate to the community and, and earn, um, you know, thousands, um, tens of thousands of, of supporters in a virtual space. And so I was really surprised to see how successful we were able to be. It's given me a lot of preparation for this, my first session, which will be all virtual. Um, so I've learned how to build relationships and hope to take a lot of relationships in this virtual space. So I hope to take all of those skills and surprises um, with me to the state legislature. Um, but in, you know, you, you can meet people and build relationship and get a strong message out and do really important work, even virtually. Um, but that was a major surprise because I thought, oh no, how are we going to do this and not doorbell? Um, but here we are, we did it. Yeah, that's a good point. This is such an unusual time to be, um, to be campaigning. Um, Representative Wicks, did you, what was your experience? Sure, well, first of all, I'll echo what um, 
Senator Nobles, uh, Senator Elect -like Nobles just mentioned, um, it was a very difficult run, but it was, you know, surprising that we were able to do so much good work um, remotely um, and, and really um, speak to voters and have one of the most successful elections um, that we've ever had. Um, and, um, you know, another thing that I'll add is, you know, just the amount of people that, that want to come out and support you, whether that be financially or, um, you know, sign waving and, and calling and making those, you know, doing all those important things. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little scary putting yourself out there and, and asking these big questions or, you know, and, and talking to people and saying, hey, I'm going to be the person that comes, you know, and helps you and, and wants to make some big changes. And so the number of people that just came out um, of the woodwork, I feel like, and um, that just, you know, came um, to support me and on every different level um, was just just amazing um, and just wonderful to see. And um, really it was exciting to see the community come together in a way like that, um, just to support one person and to support the bigger um, values that we all share as Democrats. Okay, and then Senator elect, um, I'm sorry, Representative elect um, Rule, will you go ahead and answer that same question? Yes. I. I, of course, have to agree that the biggest surprise was, surprise, we're going to have a pandemic. I mean, that just was unbelievable because I had just launched a campaign and uh, had no idea how we would navigate this. But yet here we are, we navigated it. And whenever I start feeling worried about how we'll navigate all the big decisions that are ahead of us in the next session, I think we will because we did and we do. I'm so proud of our community for stepping in when things got hard. They didn't even skip a beat and they're continuing to do so in many ways. Um, and to me, that's what really kind of motivates me to keep going at 110% because I know that our community is also in 110% on looking after each other and making good decisions on behalf of the folks who live here. Those were all excellent uh, responses. And my next question is kind of along the same lines. Um, so a lot of things have changed um, since the pandemic really took hold mid-March. Um, I just, I remember things were so normal the last week of February. Um, up in downtown Seattle, I was up there working and walking around and it was totally a normal normal week and then the very next week it was different. So um, having all of you, and I believe Representative uh, Wicks that you you entered after the pandemic started. So so with the pandemic sort of being in the um, recent, while you're making this decision, what, what did you see that was specifically caused by the pandemic that you would like to address in this upcoming session? And let's start with Representative Wicks this time. Well, thank you so much for that question. Um, and if you haven't heard the construction that's happening in the background, um, that's because I'm trying to build an office upstairs since we're gonna be doing everything remote and I need a space to work. So um, that's a great question and a great segue <laughs> for this one. Um, actually, some of the things that, um, you know, it, it's interesting the, when I, I was the first uh, appointment process um, for the Snohomish County Dems, I think for all Democrats that took place uh, remotely and it was a, pr a pretty long process and new, they did a great job, but um, it's kind of interesting to to go through that. I know um, council member, um, the, the council had a, a had one of the um, options too. And so the council had done something remotely as well. So I had an opportunity to go through that process, um, to watch the process that happened and played out at the county council level, um, but with, with um, council member Mead um, and former representative um, Jared Mead. And so that was interesting as well. But you know, the one thing that I've really appreciated throughout this whole process is um, I can now watch an Everett city council meeting or Snohomish county city council meeting um, or Marysville city council meeting from 
from my kitchen counter um, and um, and be able to to know what's going on and to provide comment um, and to be able to do that while I cook dinner and and provide for my family. And so one thing I'm working on this year is some adjustments to the Open Public Meeting Act, um, which would codify some of the things that we've done, um, having these remote meetings and that accessibility for folks um, and being able to provide remote testimony long into the future, um, because that has really supported uh, people with disabilities, people who are um, use transit, and um, has also um, helped us reduce our greenhouse gases. Um, and I feel like I can get a lot more done. Um, that's another conversation um, around childcare and access and all of those things. But that's something I think out of this pandemic that has been a positive, and I hope that we can continue to, to create more accessibility at these meetings and more opportunities for public comment. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, there's a lot more accessibility. We can do a lot more from home and not do all the driving, although I do still feel like there's quite a bit of traffic <laughs> out there. So, um, but uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and um, can you answer that um, representative elect rule? Yes, happy to. One of the things I thought about before deciding to run for this position is how could I amplify the voices of both the people in my city where I served on the city council, but also the people who came into my therapy office and sat on my couch and um, really were, you know, hurting. And one of the things that occurred to me is how many people individually would come in hour after hour and tell me about the things that were hard in life and that they didn't realize that so many of these things were connected to the person before them who came and talked to me or the person that came behind them. Because really a lot of these issues are systems issues. So when the pandemic hit, I had that moment of, you know, I am a community helper. What's my role in this? How can I, you know, I immediately think, how can I go out and help? And I was really grateful for the opportunity to be running for office in that moment when I realized that's what I can do. Um, I'm very grateful and excited about my experience on the Blaine City Council doing economic development for our community, because I think that's gonna be absolutely essential as we move forward through the next steps here. And I look forward to the opportunity to um, help folks access things that they haven't been able to opportunities and work and jobs and equity. Those things are very important to me. I think when we're talking about helping people, what we really are talking about is how to create opportunity for them to, to live the life that they dream of. And that's kind of, that is our American dream. And I think that we can do some of that work in a more intensive and intentional way now that so many things have been brought to light. So I'm looking forward to that piece. And I also, had the goal of improving our mental health system and that certainly is appropriate now even more so because we know that with the the pandemic there are also mental health challenges that come with that for all of us and i look forward to putting in systems in place that can help access to that and really create a good strong mental health system across a full spectrum You, you did bring up some interest, uh, something that I want to um, touch on, which is mental health issues um, later. But uh, as Senator-elect um, uh, Nobles, I'd like you to, to respond to the question as well, and then we'll move on. Thanks. Thank you. And I'll pick up there, because definitely I'm excited to serve on the um, Behavioral Health Subcommittee to do some really important work around mental health and the trauma and impacts of this pandemic on our community members. I'm also excited to focus on workforce development and economic development issues, um, including um, digital equity, um, access to broadband, getting our community members back to work at Tacoma Urban League. Um, immediately in March, we were helping businesses with um, PPP and other small business um, loans and grants, and we continue to do that small business support. And so I'm excited as a legislator to work really hard to help our businesses to, you know, reopen or um, think creatively about their business models, but more importantly, to make sure that um, we 
okay, couldn't, there was a poll that jumped on my screen while I was talking, um, but to make sure that we work really hard to get resources in our community. Um, another major issue is housing stability, um, making sure that folks are able to pay rent, pay mortgage, stay in their homes. Um, so a lot of really important topics, but I would say behavioral health, um, workforce development, COVID recovery, um, digital equity, um, getting our students back to school as, you know, as soon as we can safely. Um, I really look forward to working on those, those types of issues. Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and then hop back into um, not just the mental health piece, but there's also, you mentioned the economic development um, or the economic impact that we've seen. Mental health, economic development and impact are related because uh, you know if people don't have a job they can become quite distraught obviously um, and then there's there's also the the side of how the pandemic has really shined a light on the inequities in our society and so um, I'm gonna have you go ahead and start um, representative elect rule with some thoughts on on how those all those issues or any thoughts you have, how they can be addressed. Yes, thank you. Uh, we have we have a lot of work to do, and much of this work, when I think about it in, in terms of systems, it bumps into one another. So we can't talk about mental health without talking about opportunity, and we can't talk about um, housing if we're not talking about jobs, and, and all of these things really intersect with one another. And I, appreciate that you know people don't live in a bubble and if they're having the difficulty in being able to work or make a living or pay their rent or their mortgage the anxiety is going to go up so they're you know these are not separate issues um i also want i don't know if this gets to your question but i want to talk a little bit about children and youth because our children and youth mental health issues are being exacerbated as well and I think that we've had intention to put those at the forefront for a while, but we don't have any time to waste on that. Um, that's something we need to move forward with quickly. And I'm really concerned about our youth right now and their mental health and looking forward to making some progress there as well. Okay, and then uh, Representative Wicks, would you like to answer that too, please? Sure, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I'll echo I'll, a lot of the comments um, that um, Representative Elect Rule made. Um, and, you know, families, we're so we're such a heavily dependent state on our local taxes and, and state taxes. Um, and we're heavily dependent on sales tax and property taxes. And so when people don't have the opportunity to um, invest in the economy, and they don't have the resources, um, that, you know, puts our state in a very unfortunate place. So the best thing that we can do is make sure that people have the resources, um, and then the means to be able to invest back and be part of the economy. Um, I'm working on a couple of um, bills um, that are related to addressing some of our issues around um, uh, kids and families. Um, I know someone mentioned that in the chat. Um, I'm engaging with Rep. Sen on the Fair Start for Kids Act um, with a elect Barry on the expansion of paid family medical leave and on legislation with the Economic Security Department um, on a Family Fairness Act that I'm calling it um, that would expand employment benefits to those with good cause to quit their place of employment due to inaccessibility of care um, for a child or a vulnerable adult. Um, we know that COVID-19 has cost businesses and our government and our family a lot, and, and that it's that is due to so many women and, and a few men being pushed out of the workforce due to family commitments at home. Um, so I think through this type of legislation, um, we can create more opportunities that prioritize our families and, and quality of life. and don't require us to choose between making a living and being active participants in the economy or ensuring that our children get the care and education they need to grow into successful adults that will also be able to contribute to the economy. Um, 
So I think these three measures working together will begin to shift how we look at, at and value um, work and will create more equity across Washington, um, also creating economic vitality and helping us stay resilient. Um, so, you know, I think addressing the, the family issues and, and that access is going to be the biggest thing that um, we can do to, to get people back to work and to, to help our economy thrive in the, in the months and years to come. Okay, thank you for that. And then, um, uh, Senator Elect Nobles, did you get did you get that question? I know we lost you for a second. Do you want me to repeat it for you? You repeat it. Um, so what we're talking about here is um, how the pandemic has really shined a light on on inequities um, we have in our communities, also uh, mental health and the importance of that, along with. Um, how we, uh, the economic impact that, that the pandemic has had on everyone really in the state. So um, if you wanna go ahead and answer that, um, I will put myself on mute. And as a question, how will our work in a legislature kind of help to mitigate, eliminate those, those issues? Okay, thank you. Um, definitely, I, um, like I mentioned, I'm excited to work on the Behavioral Health Committee. It's really important that the senator from this district is on that committee because we have Western states um, in our district. Um, but out, outside of you know making sure that we are understanding the issues of, of Western states um, and needs um, of that um, institution, we want to pay close attention to the needs of community members um, who are also, you know, dealing with their um, mental health, as you know, I would say we we all do, and making sure that we are um, providing resources to to support those needs, and you know, normalizing talking about it. And I think as it relates to this pandemic, making sure that we are um, talking about its impacts on our on our mental health. I mean, not being able to c connect to our social networks and family and celebrate um, seasons and you know weddings or graduations is is impactful. Losing jobs, losing money, not having that childcare that um, Representative um, Wicks mentioned um, is you know very hard to deal with. Even you know all of my children, we made a commitment as a family to just all, you know, focus on therapy, you know, moving forward, because it's it's hard to not be with friends, to not be in the classroom, um, to not be in the same space as teachers, but it's what we have to deal with right now, and we'll move through it. I'm also, you know, looking forward to, yes, working on, um, I'm going to speed it up here, because I feel like with my camera going out, it kind of threw me off a little bit, but I'm looking forward to working on childcare issues and in, in helping um, to license more child care centers or keep them open, make sure they have their resources. We want to make sure that's a resource for families. Um, I've been meeting this week with a lot of colleges and I think even providing um, workforce development programs and training and credentialed, you know, college credits for um, these types of classes and trainings for, you know, high school students and college students and, you know, doing what we can as a community to provide workforce opportunity, green jobs, you know, to focus on, you know, just transition and climate change, but to make sure that we're employed our community members and I will continue to be an advocate for our, our businesses that we've worked tremendously hard to help to keep their doors open um, or to, to think about what's in front of us. You know, business is, is not as usual and how we can be successful moving forward, knowing we'll be dealing with this pandemic for a long time. Um, obviously, during this pandemic, we've also had to confront um, racial justice and public safety. And so it is going to be this session, a big topic, um, police transparency and accountability. And I don't think any of us will escape having to work on that um, this year in a legislature. And so um, looking at um, data collection around use of force um, is likely a bill that I'll, that I'll work on. Um, but I want to, I want to focus on what I campaigned on to get here. And so, you know, car tab relief and, you know, the transportation budget and, and what that will, will look like and how we can continue continue to improve um, our, our transportation um, infrastructure, um, how we can generate revenue for all the many things, all of the vital programs that we need to fund in this state for community members. Again, I could go on and on. Um, there's a, a long list, as everyone said before me, but I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work. 
Okay, and I'm going to uh, put out a new poll right now, um, so it won't be interrupting anyone. Um, so uh, go ahead. I'm gonna. My, my next question here is: um, This is a, a an interesting time to enter um, the legislature. So uh, something that you know, there's a lot of. Um, bonding that happens among um, the new legislators. And so I'm, I'm wondering how the three of you plan to go about meeting um, your, uh, your fellow legislators and, and what sorts of, um, have you already started the process or how, how are you gonna start doing that? And Senator-elect Nobles, I'm gonna have you go ahead and start. Thank you. Such a great question. Yes, I have started um, meeting virtually with um, my colleagues across the aisle. Um, I have had some Zoom happy hours, just lots of folks who are um, asking, you know, what what can I do to help answering questions about, you know, working a bill. I just keep a laundry list of, of questions and um, whether I initiate a meeting via um, Teams or Zoom or if another colleague of mine reaches out. Um, I like to, I for sure am prioritizing those meetings with my colleagues, but also one way that I hope to build relationship and it kind of is related to that poll because there are lots of instructions around um, how many bills legislators should focus on passing in this session and we're not at full capacity. And so I've made the decision to um, be a really good collaborator. I mean, that's what I like to do in general, but instead of being a kind of lone ranger and working on a lot of pet projects and bills, this isn't the year for that. This is a year to be extremely focused and pass bills that have the likelihood of um, making it um, through. So I hope to work a lot with my with my colleagues on um, bills where we can collaborate and just get more, you know, virtual FaceTime with each other as a new member, but also because I won't be able to run into folks in the hallway. And I think I'm going to try to spend some time in my office in Olympia. It's my very first year. And while it is virtual and we'll be working from home, I hope to just get acquainted with, um, you know, in, in a very socially distant way with some of my colleagues that I may be able um, to see around campus. But um, I'm going to just work overtime um, and use a lot of the skills that I picked up on the campaign trail to get to know my peers and colleagues and, and build relationships as, as we're working really important bills. Okay, Representative Wicks, do you want to go ahead and answer that? And you, since you've already been kind of doing it, you might have some good, some good feedback for all of us. Thank you for the question. Yeah, to, to kind of go off of what um, Senator like Nobles was saying, um, I, I do kind of feel like I, I have a little bit of a leg up because I, one, I worked in the legislature in um, 2013. Um, so a lot of the same legislators that are now um, more senior legislators um, were just starting then. So I've had some good relationships there and that's been really, really helpful in that process. And, you know, I think early on, um, you know, my work with the Women's Political Caucus as well, you know, I was really, you know, gung-ho about getting through this and, and kind of looked ahead to um, this is not going to be you know the standard forever um, and so I didn't I didn't make a lot of the changes that I felt like I needed to make um, you know and, and really learn zoom and now I realize that I, I'm gonna need to do that and so a little different I'm I'm ready to you know kind of buckle down and, and and do this work from you know remotely and and use this as a new opportunity and a new challenge and i'm really thankful i'll say to house staff and senate staff who is real have really adapted and created a lot of these mechanisms for us to be able to vote from afar and um and are really diving in and doing this work when this normally would have been a time where they had a little bit of rest and relaxation before the session started um and so you know I've been talking to a lot of legislators again, um, meeting with them. We're really focused on a few things when we go to this legislative session. Um, does it address um, the uh, climate crisis? Does it address the uh, COVID crisis? Does it address, um, does it bring in revenue? Does it address social equity? I'm probably forgetting a few and there's other things that are part of that as well. But we're really trying to look at the bills um, that we bring forward. Um, and, and as Senator-elect Nobles said, you know, 
prioritize that. And I think, again, it's given me an opportunity um, with the bills that I'm working on around um, children, youth, and families um, to partner with other leaders that can take the charge on those bills. Um, and we can work collaboratively to, to make some really meaningful change for folks. So I think, again, the bills will be more focused and more thoughtful. Um, and not that they aren't thoughtful usually, but I think we're really just going to focus on getting some meaningful change in there. Um, and, you know, really trying to address, um, you know, our revenue shortfalls and, and provide options for our local governments to support them because they've been taking on a lot of the burden in the meantime. Um, but I look forward to just some real great work um, and some, you know, on some um, awesome bills. So I think we're going to get some more quality than quantity this year. I'm excited about that. Okay, and um, Representative-elect rule, the same question. And really same answer. I agree with what the others have said. Uh, I actually think, you know, sometimes in times of great challenge or crisis, we have clarity. And I think that's what we're gonna see this legislative session, clarity and purpose. Um, we need to make sure that we're looking after people and giving them opportunity to thrive. Again, uh, that's my goal. We're going to leave with that. And that might look very clear and simple this time. Um, but I'm very hopeful for the things that we can do in a short period of time virtually. We've adapted the whole time. You know, any of us have been campaigning. We've done it virtually. And so we might even in a strange way have a leg up because we're we've been doing the work like this. Uh, this is our this is our reality right now, and I too, like Representative Wicks, have decided to just dig in and do it well, and set up our you know our all of our good um, tools in our toolbox virtually so that we can make this work and connect in the best way that we can. And I appreciate that lots of people have been really open and responsive. One of the most beautiful things about working virtually is that I have found people are quite responsive. We have settled into our uh, quieter lives in some ways. Um, yes, it's very busy, but people are connecting because we know we need to, we know the importance of it. So I look at that as an opportunity and I'm looking forward to being able to do that in the ways that we can. Um, okay, and this will be my last question. Um, and if the audience has any questions they would like to put in, um, feel free to do that. We have about five minutes left. But um, so maybe for a couple minutes for each of you, um, we can go to actually we can go to about 1250 here. But the pandemic really, I know, has changed everybody's life in one way or another. And I think a lot of people are, you know, making the best of it with family time and being positive, um, but getting a little bit more real. I know that it's probably had some negative impacts as well. Um, and if you could open up and share with us a little bit about something that somehow it, it had a painful impact on you. And on top of that, the second part of this um, question is, what will be the very first thing that you do when you can do whatever you want when the pandemic is over? And so um, I'm going to go backwards in order then and ask um, Alicia to please start with this. Well, this is a fun game. It reminds me of a game we play at my dinner table <laughs> about ups and downs of the day. Uh, this pandemic, you know, we are not immune to the impact of the pandemic. This is, I look at things as a social worker. This is community trauma. And that means we are in a position now that we really have not been in before, that the helpers and those who need help are managing through community trauma at the same time, side by side. So yes, my family has been impacted. I think for me, one of the biggest things has been, gosh, <laughs> there's so many, but you know, uh, my business model had to completely change. It was, it was gutted in 48 hours. And I've had to rebuild that while doing the campaign at the same time. And my children came home and, and stopped going to school and started remote learning. Um, I know that is the story of so many other people in Washington, but it certainly hits home for me. That's been hard to be real. It's been really hard, um, not unlike everybody else. What I'm looking forward to, there's so many things that I'm looking forward to, but one of the, the great memories that my family always comes back to is there's a place nearby my house, which is funny to say because it's in Canada, but it's nearby my house called Playland in Vancouver. And when that border opens up, well, there's two things. When that border opens up, 
we are going to get a truckload of sushi because they have a lot of good options there. And that's a normal thing for my family to do. And then we're going to go to Playland and deal with crowds and ride the rides and have a really good time. And I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Um, and then Representative Wick, what's your response to that? Thank you. Well, I, I feel like I've been really lucky through all of this. Um, I, I don't have children right now, um, but I think, uh, you know, and I know so many of our parents are, are dealing with a lot more stress and, and workload than I can't even imagine um, having to educate my child, having, you know, to, to handle the childcare and then be on all the Zoom calls that I'm already on and I know are expected of so many. For those working in education, teachers having to both educate their children and educate um, their class as well remotely, um, it's it's a rough time. Um, I would say I'm really lonely um, right now. Um, I'm, I'm partly lucky. My my husband is an essential worker. He's an electrician, um, which is always needed right now, and um, works in construction. So he needs to to be out. Um, but yeah, I spend my days kind of you know just talking to people on Zoom, and, and that can really weigh on you a lot. And um, it's a whole different environment, I think, to be communicating with you this way than um, what I'm really used to is, is being around people and talking and, and I, I, you know, I thrive on people and relationships. Um, and it's, but I, but I, again, I, I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity to, to be able to do all of these things. Um, and I look for any opportunity that I can, you know, go out and safely, um, volunteer, <laughs> um, just to get that human connection, um, with folks. Um, I'm really looking forward to going to a baseball game. Um, those were, you know, obviously a lot of sports were canceled this year. My husband is a baseball coach at our, uh, Marysville Pilchuck high school. And, um, we, we were so looking forward to going to the Aqua Sox games and a Mariners game and Mariners games. And, um, and so that's just something that we really love to do. And then, you know, hopefully travel <laughs> somewhere um, a little bit more. We did a little camping trip this year, which um, was nice and really nice to get away from Zoom and everything. But um, to really go and experience um, the world is something that we really enjoy doing together and is really important for our relationship. So hopefully um, we'll get to do that as well. And we'll get to support those airlines and um, our, uh, Boeing over here in my district. <laughs> Um, okay, Senator-elect Noble, same question. Thank you. Um, definitely our family has been impacted. I remember the first day of school, all of my kids had trouble logging in. Um, and we, that day, um, changed our, our um, internet plan. And, you know, always I think about families who still don't have access to technology, still don't have laptops, still don't have access to broadband, you know, may have access to a hotspot, um, but just the, you know, it was already a disparity that exists in COVID just kind of, you know, put a magnifying glass on the fact that we need to do better around technology and broadband access in our um, state and our communities. And so I look forward to working on that. And then also I remember crying tears back in March and April as we were trying to help businesses apply for PPP, but it was like this dog eat dog, first come first serve type model. And for small businesses in particular business, you know, businesses owned by community members of, of color. And at the urban league, we focus on, you know, helping our African-American community members it, you know, there is, it, it's not a fair system if you are, you know, the one person who has to complete the loan or grant for, you know, COVID relief and also work the front desk and also, you know, um, take care of your family's needs. And when those PPP windows were closing at different rates for different financial institutions and some banks weren't participating and some folks didn't have the financial relationship with any institution, I just remember feeling so sad for our community because I wanted nothing more than to help. And the way those processes and systems were working, it was very difficult to help as many people as we wanted to. So I'm committed to um, you know, creating systematic change, making sure that we keep equity at the forefront, making sure that we are you know, leveling the playing field for everyone to be successful as we talk about COVID recovery. And that again, I'm thinking about those who have fewer resources and greater barriers. Um, and so um, 
I'll, I'll be a champion for, for that type of work and advocacy. And, you know, all of my kids, they're really brilliant. They all play instruments and they're all athletes. And I really miss their concerts. Um, I miss orchestra concerts. I miss little singing concerts at my son's school. I miss watching, um, you know, my daughter, she transitioned from gymnastics to cheer um, and actually was so excited March of this year to try out for volleyball while she waited to potentially try out for cheer. And then volleyball season was canceled. So after like 10 years of doing gymnastics and making a, a change and that season was canceled. But I'm excited to see my, my kids show their pride for our community and for the bikes here um, and just to show up and support community in those spaces. So I look forward to Friday Night Lights one day soon. Um, yeah, well, I I think that this is all really good um, feedback for our audience members because it's something that that we all share, and I think everybody's really trying to put a brave face on. And but I think we're all really excited that um, you know the FDA's meeting today and the meetings are happening, and just crossing fingers that this is going to get better at some point. So having that optimism and hope and looking forward to things is is important for everyone. I think. Um, well, I'd like to thank all three of you for joining us today. It's been so interesting and I could just talk to you for another uh, hour if I had the time. So I, I appreciate the time that you've all taken um, and thank you to everyone in the audience for your questions. Um, and we look forward to being in touch with all of you soon. Um, and that's that will be all for this. Unless somebody would like to add something, go ahead and wave at me if you have anything else to add. No? Okay. Well, thanks. It's been so fun. And you guys have a wonderful day. And thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.